All right, everyone, as the AI fear-mongering continues, I thought that I'd give a little bit of my predictive analysis on where it goes with regards to medicine, especially science in general, technology, engineering, things like that. I know a lot of people are like, the robots are going to take our jobs. Well, I would point out there aren't a lot of chimney sweeps around anymore, um, but, you know, there are still people that do that. There will always be a market for skilled labor. Uh, there will always be a market for basic labor as well. Uh, the idea that the, the robots, the AI system, soon it'll replace all the teachers. Well, that'd probably be a good thing if it were properly trained and therefore capable of not being biased. Um, while that would ne necessarily be a good thing, I think, uh, if there were no teachers effectively other than for maybe lab science and things like that, uh, I don't think that's going to happen. The unions wouldn't allow it to happen anyway within medicine. The average person I don't think would be comfortable with an animatronic robot powered by a computer uh, being the one giving them, them their medical care. Uh, a lot of it is human aversion more than anything else, and that's actually going to limit uh, some AI deployment that otherwise it would be efficient, it would be effective, uh, but it won't be tolerated by people. When governments come in and they tell you, you should give us control over AI, otherwise the corporations will monopolize it. Please uh, understand that monopolies are made by government. Uh, they are permitted by government. They are often empowered by government. For instance, you currently have an app duopoly. Congress allows that to exist despite it technically being illegal right now, uh, already under U.S. law. You have monopolies in parts of the energy industry. Well, what does the government do? It gives grants and permits and stuff on a legal basis to the exclusion of doing so for competitors. Pharmaceutical companies are the greatest example. Because of the, the way in which medicine is regulated, the government has effectively frozen out any small competitor from ever rising up unless it's real goddamn ingenious. When it does rise up, they're always at hazard that they'll get uh, sued. Uh, the government will come in and use differential enforcement and punish them disproportionate to their sins in a way they wouldn't do with a bigger pharma company that donates money to them. So government creates monopolies uh, in a vacuum with no regulation over AI. Um, it, it would be the case that upstarts and crowdfunded efforts would develop their own AI systems once it, once it continues to get off the ground. We're just seeing the tip of the iceberg. As far as science and, and technology and so forth go, here's what I think will happen. The technology is as good as the people that are building it and inputting the data and training it to make the AI work. Now, AI, in my opinion, is still a long way out from becoming a sentient sort of thing, like something that people with robotic ethics would actually debate over in, uh, in a meaningful sense, other than just having a few people with tinfoil hat in their trailers claiming that the rise of the machines is nigh. What it will be very useful for is specific applications, and of course AI systems can then cross-train uh, for greater applications. You'll end, up, you'll end up with a cluster of different AI systems doing different things. Like within medicine, a link in the description archived of course, and again this technology is in its infancy technically speaking. They're already using AI to try to aid medical researchers in predicting how genes will interact. So you could look at rare genetic conditions, you can sort of figure out how they're working. You can, you can engage in gene therapy. An AI system may be capable of doing that more effectively than humans can with current uh, available technology. So genetic editing, that would be a big thing. Uh, advances in CRISPR and so forth. Um, energy technology, the AI could be given a set of parameters within uh, metallurgy and computing and energy values and all the, all the math that the nerves can supply it with and it can design systems that maybe are more efficient. Uh, they use 20% less power to do the same amount of work. They're more efficient systems or something like that. The rise in efficiency that's available. Um, again, we've just scratched the surface. If we go back 100 years and look at any technology being used then, and look at similar offshoot technologies now, you find greater efficiency of energy usage, especially of materials, um, greater interconnectedness, greater modularity. Look at the, you know, the history of firearms. It wasn't that long ago people were using black powder. They don't really use black powder anymore. Metallurgy has advanced. Everything about the weapons is more modular, more advanced, <clears throat> more reliable, etc. Medicine's the same way. Well, uh, there are some exceptions, uh, honk honk, but uh, in general, our understanding of medicine, of organic and inorganic chemistry, of the nature of the treatment of symptoms, etc., standardization, these things have, have increased over time. I have a feeling that at some point, you hit a tipping point in which AI can be trained to train itself. 
Um, the problem uh, with this entire premise, and this is a hard limitation, much like people's limitation in tolerating something like AI being at least directly adjacent to their lives day to day, like having a Codsworth roaming around cleaning things or something, although that's physically possible. Probably not a floating robot, but a robot and it's capable of communication on a limited uh, level. The other problem is that the AI is only going to be accurate in its surmisings insofar as previously acquired human knowledge is accurate unless it advances to the point where it can compensate for that which it very well might. Right now for instance if you're having the AI system train on mathematics to do you know uh, high level high-end equations to predict what Planck's constant will be in, in this particular quantum state or something like that. The problem is that if human understanding on that mathematics falls short in any way, you're still going to get an accuracy. You may be able to get the AI to figure out if there is an accuracy to try to test things, but it'll take a, an enormous amount of effort and time. Now, here's why the government wants you to be afraid of AI systems, and corporations do too because they want to corner the market because they're terrified of the little average Joe buddy getting access to a decent crowdsourced AI system that allows them to compete with the workers in the corporations. So what AI can do, it can't do all the work for you, at least not in its current incarnation, but it can aid you in doing work. Um, it's already affecting medicine, as I said, link in the description archive, of course. It's affecting literature, it's affecting art, art in a mostly deleterious manner. It's beginning to affect film. It's beginning to affect political and social discourse. By the way, I, I mean, these are all things that the Internet did as well. We're entering a new technological epoch. It is going to be significant. People that are poo-pooing it saying, well, we'll hit PKI soon and it'll sort of peter out. Oh, boy, oh, boy, I think you're wrong. You're going full Paul Krugman, actually. Well, uh, people will soon find the Internet's going to be no more important than the fax machine. That one really is one for the, it might be the uh, worst prediction that was ever made in the history of mankind, actually. <laughs> so, yeah. uh, other than, hey, maybe we should let Alaric in. That was probably a mistake, too. Um, but it's going to take time with the dot-com era, for example. In the first couple of years, mostly it's a hobby for people. It's, hey, I'm chatting with someone in Uganda. <laughs> That's kind of novel. Hey, I built a website. Look, I can post my vacation photos and stunningly 200 pixels wide. Wow. And it only takes five minutes to load now. This new dial-up is really quite something, kids, isn't it? Well, <laughs> so fast. That was the internet for the first few years. It took a little bit of time before it really had a big transformational impact outside of the internet itself. Now look at the tech that you've got off fork from it. You've got the app-driven mobile internet everywhere world. Wi-Fi that used to be there weren't a lot of hot spots. It's now basically everywhere on any device. Um, th th there aren't many any zones. Uh, that, I mean, you can have low-speed internet zones, but uh, for the most part, anywhere that's reasonably developed, you're going to be able to pick up a signal. Um, cell service has followed the same basic pattern as well. Cell service in the United States 30 years ago was a running joke to many people. The uh, uh, old commercials are like, well, we've got 20% more cell coverage than this other, uh, this other company. Uh, look, at, look at our network. And it's still like, okay, 10% of the urban centers in the United States are decently canvassed by your cell service. Now we have debates over how many fucking cell towers you're going to see uh, on the city skyline. They even put up in the middle of the woods, they disguise them as uh, fucking pine trees. Frank and Pine, I believe, uh, is there are several of them in Vermont. The neighbors didn't like them very much. Key nimbyism. Um, I think the AI will have a similar transformative impact, and we're just beginning to see that. The main problem is that you're going to see inaccuracy within what's put into the algorithms, into the code, into the AI itself, and that'll hold it back. You need the uh, technology to be more advanced in order to weed out those mistakes, those human errors to prevent bias. The reason why they want them to be monopolized is because they want them to be biased. They don't want people to see the truth under any objective measure. They want people to see a curated narrative especially with regards to social and political discourse. That's number one. And number two, they don't want to share the money from the next potential great technological epoch rising up right after the fucking last one. Within many of our lifetimes, we've literally seen, you know, the Anthropocene era basically culminate and become reality. It's no longer, hey, I think that we're impacting the Earth in such a manner that we've entered a new epoch. No, no, at this point, we, we definitely have. Uh, it, when it might happen again. AI might develop the next big thing as well. It's self-replicating AI. 
now with 10% less gray goo to uh, destroy the world more slowly. I don't think that'll happen. Uh, but I expect it to be a slow crawl forward uh, and expect governments around the world to try everything they can to lock it down, mainly by getting the will of the people behind such an idea by scaring them. So the first time that somebody uses AI for some sort of major crime, it'll be all over the place. See, even if the crime was something that they could have done without AI, the fact that it was used to aid them in any way, it aided in uh, narco-trafficking. It aided in the storage of illicit material and trying to hide it. It aided in someone getting killed. They will flip out and they'll realize, hey, you know, the average person's not going to use them for these things because the average person's not interested in it. But this gives us a great way to pitch to Soccer Mom America that it's too dangerous for the average person to really have access to AI unless it's fully licensed and credentialed by the government through a mainline corporation that they have to then pay every single month. That is what they're aiming for. That's about all. Peace out.